Hello everyone, so I'm bringing you a quick video to... Uh, that's a lie, this isn't going to be a quick video at all, it's probably going to be around 20 minutes, but this is... I'm bringing you a video anyway to uh, kind of discuss the roles within Anvil, what each breaker kind of fits into these roles, and what you really need in a team to have the easiest time within your runs. Um, to quickly clarify, this might look like a tier list, but this is not a tier list video. Um, I personally do not like tier lists, I think they are in no better way to put the terms bullshit um they do not indicate really how well a character would perform in a game with that being said um i will break down what it is on your screen right now these are the three different roles that exist within the game there is a misconception going around on discord on reddit and twitch and youtube where people may think that there is only really a tank dps or a healer role this is not true. Uh, for you to perform well into this game in multiplayer and try to hit really fast seasonal times or really fast extreme times and try and speed run the game in general, you will swiftly learn that there is only really a support role or a DPS role. Um, this is also true if you're just trying to have an easier time in the game. Uh, if you're just trying to make these uh, your runs like just get easier clears, either first time on a breaker, or as well as trying to better yourselves and try and hit a new DPS ceiling, or try and break a threshold where you've been struggling previously. Tanks don't fit into this. Um, if you're trying to tank an enemy, you're not providing damage and you're not providing uh, debuffs, you're just kind of there to eat damage. You will find yourself, even though you're thinking you're tanking, you will find yourself still getting one shot later into the runs just due to how high the damage scales in this game once the enemies get to those higher levels. With that being said, we'll begin the, the kind of breakdown in front of you. So to start with, I'm going to talk about what each roles are. So as a support, you're either defense shredding or you're bringing some sort of debuff to the enemies or a buff to your allies to help them deal a lot of damage. Even if you're a support if role, you still want to be finding damage relics for yourself to help provide damage where you can. It just doesn't mean that you're going to be hitting as high a damage ceiling as a DPS breaker who focuses only around dealing damage. Um, the skill based role is a breaker that does skill based damage. Uh, their best builds will be around building around skill power and utilizing relics that causes their skills to hit harder, opposed to weapon based power and weapon based uh, relics to doing damage with your weapons. Um, your weapons in these builds will either be something that provides you critical chance, like the Crasher for some of the medium breakers, or something that just has really good stats on them and will be used as uh, what is known as in gamer terms, a stat stick, where it's basically a thing that's just there to give you the stats that's on it. Um, weapon based builds are the opposite. Um, the weapon DPS role is basically breakers that perform better using a build that's centered around weapon DPS, so weapon power type things. Your weapons will matter in this, um, so a weapon that looks like it's grossly rolled but is a bad weapon will perform worse than a weapon that has alright rolls but is a really good weapon. Um, this will be reflective on someone like Lina, who can pick up the Venom Rifle. A alright rolled Venom Rifle will perform higher DPS value-wise than a Freezer Rifle that's rolled with gross relics. It's just how the game functions. With that being said, um, we have our first breaker. It's going to be Jungler. So Jungler is the default breaker that everyone gets to start with, so it feels only natural to cover him first. Um, he can have access to the Crasher Shotgun, and has high intrinsic skill multipliers on his uh, skills. For this reason, he performs better in the skill DPS role. Um, some people might see him having some like attack speed stuff and weapon power stuff in his skills and think that he will just perform better as a weapon breaker or will naturally gravitate towards that. It's a really bad habit. Um, if you see a breaker that has an incredibly high skill power on one of their skills, try them out as skill power. And you'll get an idea that skills hit very hard. Um, you have access to more ways of scaling your skill damage up than you do your weapon damage stuff. For this reason alone, skill power breakers like Jungler are going to hit incredibly hard. And he will fit a main DPS role within the team. This means he will be, for the player that pretty much, if you're a streamer and you want to have big ego type thing, Jungler will be that bre uh, breaker that you want to play to really show off big burst damage and try and one phase these bosses. Um, if you're a speedrunner and you're trying to hit the fastest times possible in a multiplayer setting, Jungler will be this breaker. In seasonal, Jungler will be that breaker. In extreme, Jungler will be that breaker. Uh, he's just incredibly strong right now. Um, 
Moving on over to Sandman. Sandman fits uh, primarily into the supportive role. Um, this is due to the fact that he can bring defense shredding capabilities uh, on his Sand Sniper, as well as shields for his allies, which can provide weapon power and just keep them safe in general. Um, he can provide a debuff on his grenade as well, which will re uh, increase damage enemies take by 25%, if I remember correctly. Um, someone can correct me below if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure it's 25%. If not, it might have been changed in an upcoming patch or something, but for now it should be 25%. Um, and he can provide a lot of CC via Petrify on his Sand Snipe and his Survival Skill. This is important as if you want to check back on one of my previous videos where I was talking about status effects and I was talking about transitioning bosses, I was talking about how important it is to be able to catch bosses on particular attack frames. Saman does this best as it's instant. Like you pretty much, if you see this frame and you don't have sand snipe off cooldown or you haven't got enough time to react to it, you can just quickly survival skill into it and catch it as early as possible. It's not going to be as long as duration as um, if you caught with sand snipe, but because of the fact he has this as an option means that consistently you are going to be able to perform this action better. Um, his DPS scaling though, uh, ceiling though isn't that bad, so you will also see him down here in the skill DPS role. This means that he'll be able to hybrid between the two of being a support and a skill DPS, so he'll be able to pick up crashes himself, build around some skill power, some crit damage, and still provide the same things that he would provide if he was just playing only support. The only issue with this is if you're trying to play him as both DPS and a support, whilst uh, in, a in a run with a jungler, you're going to be kind of hogging some of the good crashes from the jungler. But say two good crashes drop, you give the better one to the jungler and the less good one to the, uh, the Sandman. Now suddenly the Sandman is going to be helping with this damage bursting as well. Um, moving across, we are going to talk about Lina. So Lina is the first breaker that you will see here that performs best with only a weapon, DP uh, weapon build. This is kind of because his skill scaling isn't that high and I have got some footage of a skill power run that I'm going to be putting together and putting on YouTube for just some giggles. Uh, it's kind of a meme run but it's still pretty potent. Uh, he, he can build skill build but it's not very consistent, the burst damage isn't very high and to get there it's just not that great. Uh, he has some great stuff at weapon power builds though, so he can get access to 100% crit chance on his tripwire, which works on all of his damage, including his weapon, which lets him ignore critical chance relics, and that's the same thing with uh, these breakers that can pick up the crasher shotgun, this means that they can ignore the critical chance relics as well. Um, but back to Liner though, because he can ignore critical chance relics means that you can build more critical damage, attack power, and weapon power relics as much as you can. Uh, he has access to Acceleration Module, giving a bunch of attack speed, as well as a Burn Multiplier on it. As well as also being able to pick up an upgrade for it that makes him make, not consume ammo, which means Infinite Mag is not needed on Jungler. You can pick up a large mag and have the Venom Rifle plus this other upgrade perform the exactly same as an Infinite Mag, without having to have uh, the Infinite Mag hog a Tier 3 Relic slot. Um, for this reason though, he will only really fit into a DPS role. He can fit into the main DPS role, or even a secondary DPS role, but he will only ever be a DPS. Um, moving along, you'll see Lightning. So Lightning only really fits a DPS role as well, but he will build now around skill power. It, you might gravitate towards weapon on him due to the fact he gets attack speed, he can get uh, safer distances due to his movement speed on Lightning Slide, as well as you'll see some weapon power based stuff in his kit as well. But his shockwave has high base damage as well as pretty good upgrades for it that can help increase its damage by quite a lot. He also can get access to the critical uh, chance shotgun known as the crasher which will let him get 100% crit chance uh, if he fires it before using his skills and then really burst and melt down health bars with his shockwave and lightning slide. For this reason he'll only ever fit into the DPS role. He doesn't bring enough multipliers for him to really be able to switch to a supportive role. Maybe in the future if they ever buff his shockwave uh, debuff to being a bit stronger or make it so the reactors can proc a little bit faster he might actually transition over to being a secondary support. But for now though he works best as a skilled DPS breaker. Moving along to Draken. Draken is another medium based breaker who has access to a crasher shotgun. He won't be able to start with it, he's only forced into swords, but he can pick him up in the run, which will be his best option once you do. Which means he'll be able to utilize things like Critical Power Magazine a lot easier. 
Uh, his damage ceiling is actually pretty high. He can hit some pretty high numbers with his blade shock. The unfortunate part about him is the conditions in which it have to be met for him to be able to do this. He has to have his buffs active from all of his other skills, as well as have the enemy under an active debuff of bleed, which can be a problem in multiplayer settings as you might have people push boss health bars whilst you're still in the animation of your blade shock. Or bleed might just fall off because someone else has procked it. That being said, he can still hit very hard once those conditions are met, leading him to being a very valuable first or second DPS option for your team. Now, we've done all the medium breakers, we're going to head over to the heavier breakers now. I'm going to classify them as medium weight, lightweight, and heavyweight breakers. Uh, medium weight being stuff like jungler, heavyweight being stuff like toast, lightweight being stuff like uh, Elsa. Um, heavyweight breakers. They look tanky and you might instinctively think, oh, I'm going to be a tank, let me build around defense and stuff. This is a trap. Um, you don't want to do that. So we're going to talk about Rush now. The reason you don't want to do that on these type of breakers is because as you raise your defense value to the cap, which is 90%, 90%, you're going to realize you're still being one shot by things. This isn't going to help you. You want to look at these stats as a way of gaining damage. So you want to look at stuff like defense value on a breaker, get these skills that increase it by 200%, which is 200% of the base, by the way, so that will be 30% times 200, which would be 90. Um, and then scale that into your attack power via things like Retail Suit. Um, with that being said, like these breakers all have ways of kind of scaling their defense up. Uh, I think Guillotine's the only one that's not. Uh, Rush will perform best as a skill-based breaker. Um... The skill elements that he has aren't going to be as high as the other breakers I have mentioned previously. Uh, but his weapon based perks also aren't that great, which means he's going to do his highest DPS as skill. Um, he can kind of fill a support role as well due to the fact that he can bring CC as well as defense shred, which is why you would also see him up here. Um, that being said, if you were going to build him around being a skill based breaker, in a team setting, if you're going for speed, you probably wouldn't take rush. But. If you're just going for your first clears, I would build him around making his beam, his sand beam, do a lot of damage um, by picking up crit chance relics, crit damage relics, um, attack power relics, skill power relics. Uh, they have access to stuff like Venom Caster, which provides the poison status, which if you're not building around weapon damage, you don't care for the weapon damage. So having just that status alone is a lot of damage later into your runs, which will then also let you pick up things like skill amplification magazine in your runs, as well as critical damage amplification in your run, and all these other great magazine-based relics. Um, once you've kind of got that rolling, you would then also want to find the defense shred for him, so he can, if your team doesn't have a defense shred, he could still provide that, as removing defense from enemies is very potent for everyone in the team which is why it's very important that you have at least one breaker that can do it in your comp. Um, moving along to Quake. Quake can fill a supportive role and a DPS role about effectively the same value from each. So the thing that Quake has going for him is he has multiple ways of defense shredding. His Tremors can defense shred. He can get defense shred on his spiral punches. He can provide a multiplier on his spiral field, a 50% damage taken multiplier, which is pretty strong and comparable to Bronte. Um, as well as having high base damage on his spiral punches and his trevors, which leads him to being better as a skill base breaker, if you were going to play him DPS, but can also perform the solo support role or a secondary support role if need be. Um, moving over to Guillotine. With Guillotine, he only really has damage options, but has the, some of the craziest burst potential we have ever seen in the game. We have hit numbers on Guillotine that we have never seen on any other breaker in terms of damage per hit, just not DPS. It takes him a while to get to this point in Seasonal. Um, in Extreme, he can't really hit those numbers, but he can still chunk pretty hard. Um, he will be your main DPS in Seasonal, but you would probably want a third player playing a DPS as well to help speed up the earlier game once he gets to that point. Um, his ex Executioner, the highest we've ever seen it hit, was around 420 million, which is absurd because you're in the highest I've ever seen my Juggler Mines hit was around 380 million. That's saying something about his potential damage, and we think we could possibly squeeze a little bit more damage out, but we're not quite sure how. Um, that being said, though, he only really brings damage. He brings nothing in terms of debuffing or buffing for his allies. He can movement speed debuff enemies, but doesn't work on some bosses, it's a little bit inconsistent. 
but due to this chunkiness in a in a seasonal run you will really enjoy guillotine if you like this type of playstyle by building around his executioner gets a crit chance skill power crit uh sorry not crit chance skill power critical damage and attack power relics the reason you don't want crit chance is because his executioner has an upgrade that can bring him 100 percent crit chance whilst using it now we've spoke about some of the uh skill power base breakers now let's go over to the heavy base breakers that do weapon based builds so you have mountain mountain unfortunately is a breaker that doesn't have high skill damage doesn't have high weapon damage Tanks don't exist, as I've previously mentioned in this role. So his niche, where he can provide damage reduction to himself while counterattacking, is very shortly lived, as he will still get one shot. Um, what he can bring to a team, though, is he can bring a 25% shock target um, debuff onto the enemies, as on his jump, as well as has access to like stuff like Venicasters. But if you're able to play him solo, you'll have the best time if you're building him around weapon-based builds, and you want to pick up either missile launchers with lots of weapon power and some magazine stuff to make sure you don't have to reload as often, um, or pick up Venom Caster, pick up some status effect-based relics and uh, weapon power and attack power and stuff, as well as crit chance, crit damage, attack speed, etc. All the good stuff for weapon power-based builds, and just let him let rip. Uh, he won't melt bosses that fast, but he will do some pretty good damage um, by himself in a solo setting. Toast, on the flip side, actually has some weapon-based stuff in his kit. His damage will only be a little bit higher than Mountain's, though, um, due to the fact that he kind of has this bad part about him where um, in a extreme run, the last boss is always going to be Protean, which means he won't get to value his burn target on his skills. Uh, his skill damage can hit pretty hard, um, but takes too long to really get rolling. It takes too much, uh, too many like scenarios for it to really work to hit those numbers. Uh, he has access to shoulder tackle, being able to buff him to increase his weapon power by 50% per charge, which will take him to 150% total. So a lot of attack uh, weapon power to get early into your run just from pressing survival skill. He has access to stuff like Venom Caster, Gatling Guns, and Missile Launchers, which are some really good weapon-based DPS weapons. And for these reasons, it's uh, the meme of buff Toast and Toast be bad is just wrong. He's honestly one of those breakers where he's kind of in the middle. He's just okay. He's like where you would want the balance of breakers to really be. Um, you just have scenarios where you have breakers that are either way below him or way above him in terms of damage ceilings. So it makes him look worse than he actually is. Um, moving on over to the lightweight breakers now. We have the first one I'm going to talk about will be Elsa. So Elsa is a breaker that could fit either a support role or a skill base role. Um, she does this thankfully due to the fact that she has Ice Wave on a relatively like mid-range cooldown, which can provide a defense shred as well as a freeze effect. Um, it's only a 5 second duration, but you can double this duration via another skill upgrade, and then further increase it via seasonal upgrade points and status effect scope, leading her to be a pretty good primary support. Uh, she can bring buffs to her team via her worms, which will be 100% skill power plus crit chance. She can bring weapon power plus attack speed, as well as healing, which healing is kind of meh in the game, but helps maintain mercy if someone has like a dam self damage relic. Um, that being said, she also can, like Sandman, get an upgrade for her dash though, that will let her put down freezing puddles, which will help her catch boss transitions, which makes her more consistent for that as well. It's just that she'll struggle against stuff like Arctic Gear, where she can't see, um, freeze them. Um, but that leads her perfectly into a DPS role as well. Her beam damage is incredibly high, which leads her to being better with skill-based builds. If you were to build her for damage, then it would weapon-based builds. Uh, she has access to tip doing 100% more damage, 200% crit damage on a larger beam. She has access to an immunity on her beam, which can be scaled into retail, which will give her more attack power. You can have things like uh, cooldown reduction. Uh, her skill power on her beast will work for her, plus crit chance on the beast will work for her. Uh, she has multiple ways of increasing her damage towards frozen targets. She has incredibly good scaling and honestly is a very well developed breaker now in comparison to how she used to be when the first game first uh, released to the point where she can main DPS or be a third DPS but will still fall short in terms of actual burst potential in comparison to someone like Lightning or Jungler. That being said, if you're doing seasonal, she is a great addition to any team. Moving on over to Shuri. Shuri is pretty much like Elsa, 
Everything I just said about Elsa could be applied to a Shiri, apart from she doesn't have a defense threat, so she would only really be used as a tertiary spot, so she would be the third spot. Um, you would want a breaker in a team that could defense red. She partners perfectly with a Sandman, as you can use Sandman to put, apply Petrify and defense red, and then have her Gust Wind upgrade that can buff 100% Petrify to your entire team. This is incredible when it comes to Shuri. This means that you'll be able to buff your entire team to do 100% more damage to Tigers underneath Petrified effects, which she can provide, or Sandman can provide for the team. And then also increase attack speed, which means she works perfectly in the liner setup. This means with just Gustwind and Liner's acceleration module, Liner doesn't need to buy any attack speed relics and can still reach attack speed cap. Um, some of the other breakers, like herself and Uzi, who work better in uh, weapon-based builds, um, she can be a great boon to them. Uh, she has healing innately, which can buff weapon power as well. Uh, she has tornadoes, which can catch frames and is kind of spammable if you get the cooldown low enough to be able to perma CC um, in some boss cases. Obviously, you have to be careful of diminishing returns. Um, but all in all, she works best as a support, but can fill a weapon DPS role if you wish to bring her for that kind of like hybrid spot, where you'll have her bring in the buffs from Gustwind, but also wanting to provide some damage via assault handguns. Um, moving on over to uh, Uzi, I'm going to touch on Uzi before Bronte. Um, so Uzi is a breaker who has an identity crisis within the game. Her weapon damage is kind of mediocre, her skill damage is very mediocre, and then her ally buffing is kind of just there. It it's nothing that's going to be crazy, she can provide attack power via her bubble, which in seasonal will be nice early, but it's kind of easy to hit attack power cap in seasonal, so it loses a lot of value. Uh, she can freeze, so she can bring a status that you might miss some, um, maybe. Um, her burst potential with the first, like, three to four planets is pretty good with her skill damage, but falls off around the 10 planet mark if you don't get crazy good relics. And her weapon DPS is kind of at the mercy of weapon balancing, and depending on how good weapons are within the game. Um, Assault Handgun's got nerfed recently, which kind of affects her hard, considering that was her niche. Um, so she's kind of just in an awkward spot, but if you were to put her in a team comp, she can work very well as the third DPS or just being there for buffing in an extreme run with attack power bubbles, providing CC, um, but you would still want to build her around damage as well, uh, but the damage source that she will be doing, which will be the best and most consistent with her, will be weapon based. I will be making guides on all of these breakers as well, eventually kind of discussing each of these builds. Um, moving over to Bront. So Bront is a breaker that excels in multiplayer but struggles in solo. Um, she's exceptional in a team comp where she provides the third player slot and can provide a secondary support next to someone like Saman who uh, can sand snipe to defense red because she can provide shock to the team which is a great status and she can do it consistently now that they fixed her bugs. Um, her Bionic Pulse can bring skill power to everyone, as well as movement speed with some upgrades, which are great for cutting down fractions of a second each room. Doesn't sound like much in a speedrun setting, each second counts. Um, she can bring shock target to everyone via her Bionic Pulse as well with some upgrades, which is incredibly potent. As well as debuff enemies to take 50% more damage from all sources, which is incredible, as these multipliers add on after your other damage calculation stuff, which means that she will help just do make your team do ridiculous damage. It, this is a breaker that we used in the last world record speedrun of um, Seasonal. We utilized Sandman, Jungler, Bronte, and we used Bronte as a way of just turbo buffing the hell out of Jungler and the Sandman. Um, now, that's not to say that she doesn't do any great damage, it's just it's, it pales in comparison to some other options. Um, in a seasonal setting, she will do really well whilst building around skill power, whilst also providing these support options. Um, she can work with a weapon build, and I have a video on the channel showing that. Um, but you will see better damage numbers if you build around her uh, skill power-esque type attribute. So, I hope this has been helpful and kind of insightful to where each breaker kind of fits into their playstyles, as well as the type of things you want to be looking for for a team composition. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's anything not clear, or if you want some elaborate um, me to elaborate on some stuff, uh, as well as other video ideas that you might want to see in the future based around the game. I will be having more actual gameplay content come out soon when I'm feeling better. Um, 
I have videos in the works of each breakup in extreme being done solo. Uh, I've got some footage, it's just some of it's corrupted, so I need to kind of go back through and do the runs again on those breakers. Um, that being said, I'm going to have a discussion video coming out as well, where I'm going to be talking along with um, the other two players I run with for our speed run settings, and kind of give a breakdown of the state of the game, really. Uh, how we feel the balancing is, our pros and cons of it, as well as kind of, even though I've discussed how I don't like tier lists, um, we're going to be presenting that inner tier list to give a more accurate representation of the actual balancing and discrepancy between the damage of a breaker. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube jazz. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one.